This is Mr. Matt from Mr. Matt and Mr. J doing a bit of late night circuit design for you. So what I'm going to be going through is this, which you may remember from about three or four years ago. Uh, I put this at the end of one of my videos that shows you a little bit about the express lift circuit design and the way the logic works. This is the complicated version and I have a simpler version here. Now I'm going to come back to this one. Let's have a quick look at this circuit. On the left hand side we have the lift direction logic. The switches here all relate to the floor selector and I will show you that in a moment as well. Down this side we have the call buttons. So on the fourth floor we have a button inside the lift and we have the up landing call and the down landing call. So if you press any one of these buttons, like the buttons on the landing or the button in the lift car, it causes one of these switches to come on. Now these are normally linked to relays, uh, but here I've just drawn them as a switch. So if there's any call active on the fourth floor, then it will allow the current to go through one of the switches onto this line here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to imagine that there is a car call active on the third floor. So the supply comes through this switch here and it lands into the line here. Now, if the lift is above the third floor, like for example, the fourth floor, then the current will then have to flow downwards and it goes through this relay here. And this means that there's a call below the lift car. Now that will connect to the direction logic circuit and move the lift down towards the call. And at the same time, if there was a call active, like for example, a down landing call active on the fifth floor, then if the lift was below that, then it would force the current to go up this way and activate this relay. And then that would bring the lift up to reach the call. On this side, we have the second switches from some of these relays. So for example, the down landing call button there activates this switch, but it also activates this switch here at the same time. Now that's called a double pole switch. On the third floor, we have a car call and then an up and a down landing call. And if you go over this side, we've got exactly the same over here. There is the up landing call and there is the down landing call. And there is the lift car call. Now the stopping logic works like this. You see that stop there. Now this is simplified. If current were to reach that stop, then it would um, initiate the slowdown sequence to stop the lift at the floor. But let's imagine the lift is climbing up the shaft. So it goes floor one, floor two, floor three. Now that's represented by this here. So these are called normally closed switches which means that they're connected all the time and then when activated, they open. These are called normally open switches. Now, if a lift were to arrive at the third floor, then this switch here would close. So the current will go around here. If the lift is at the third floor, it will pass. And now it's trying to find a path to this positive supply. If there is a car call active, then it will find the path directly to the supply. If there is a up call, then it will go through here and it will go down here and it will only get to the supply and stop the lift if the lift is actually going up or it will ignore it. If the lift is going down, then it would need a down call active and now the current will go around the other way. It will go around here, around here, then if the lift is going down, then it will reach the supply and it will stop the lift. But you don't have to worry about this diagram too much because I'm going to demonstrate it. But I'm not going to demonstrate this diagram. I'm going to demonstrate the simpler diagram, which is this one. Now, this diagram is exactly the same as the one before, but is a little bit less logic. Instead of having a car call and a landing call, I'm just going to say that there is a call on the fifth floor. So one switch 
and that's the same for all the floors. This is the direction logic connected to the floor selector, which I will show you in a moment. And then on this side, we've got the stopping logic. If the lift is on the floor and there's a call active, then it will power up the stop circuit. Simple as that. Well, kind of simple. Now we have a look at the device which I'm referring to, which is the Express Lifts Floor Selector. Really cool bit of machinery this. And I'm going to be showing you one of these and hopefully I'll be connecting something up to it, which will be quite an interesting video when I get around to it. This is the device that I'm talking about. It's the floor selector. So these are the switches on the right hand side. These are the normally open switches. And then on the other side, I don't know if I'll show you. They're actually at the top. No, not quite, but they are the uh, normally closed switches. So um, I think the lift's just started up now. I'll just show you what happens. Yep, there's an electromagnet connected to that little arm there. And every time it goes past the floor, it pulls the selector around and then it's activating the different switches. And those are what I call the flippers with the electromagnets behind them. They've probably got a more technical name than that. Before we start designing our circuit, I'm going to show you a diagram which I've done that explains the switches on that floor selector. Now this is quite important when we go to design the actual circuit. So this is the rotating selector. If the lift is going up, then there is a couple of wires attached to that electromagnet behind there. There's one wire there and there's one wire here. Now this will wire into the controller and when the lift is going up, it will pulse the electromagnet behind there and move the selector around. Exactly the same for the down electromagnet behind there. So these are representing the flippers. Now, every time this goes round, it will select a new floor. Now, the bit that I have not drawn on here yet are the little posts that stick out and go round and activate these switches. Now, let's start with this side. This is the floor indicator and stopping logic. These are normally open switches. So this is where the wires will connect for the third floor. And this is where the wires will connect for the second floor. I want to do them a different color. Ah, oh, paint. I haven't used this for a while now. No. No. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, one more go. <sighs> Never mind. Right, you get the idea. If the lift arrives at the second floor, then... This will move around. It's fighting me this evening. This will move around and it will bring these contacts together. So that's a normally open switch. When that bar comes around, it will do this. It will move them contacts together. So that's a normally open switch, which is what we've got here then it will go closed when this post comes around and activates it. Now there's one of these posts for every floor. So let's put this one, let's say that's just gone past it. That one's actually activating that switch. This one's due to activate that switch and this one's not made it around yet. So you can see that every rotation activates a new switch. The first one will be I'll be the ground floor and then this one will go off and then the next post will come around and switch this one on then off and then on so in other words wherever the lift is it will activate the corresponding switch by closing the contacts together now the switches on this side are exactly the opposite so the wires for the third floor would connect here and here these ones disconnect when the selector comes round. So all these switches want to be joined up and then when the little post comes round, it will go in between and it will separate them as per my arrows there. Can you see my arrows? These are indicating what will happen when the post comes round. So it comes round, it activates the ground floor and it separates the contact. So it does this moves them apart then the next rotation it will join this back together and then it will then disconnect the next one up 
and so on. So in other words, as this selector goes round, there is always one of these switches that's broken. Now this is the direction logic and the way it works, I will be showing you by wiring this up in the circuit designer and showing you it actually working. But this is, is essentially what happens. If I join, if I join all the switches up, then I can place a device called a relay on each end. Um, let's have a star. Now this represents the lift needs to go down and I'll do one at the top. This represents the lift needs to go up. Now, if the lift is at the second floor, then that switch will be broken. Now, if there was a call active on the first floor, I would apply a voltage here. Now, this is the direction logic. Which way will the current go? So a call active on the first floor and the lift is at the second floor. Now, lifts don't have brains. They can't look down the shaft and go, oh, there's a call down there. I think I need to go down and get you. It all has to be represented in a mechanical form. So the electrical current comes in through here and then it can't go up this way and go through that switch and then through this switch because this switch is active. That's where the lift is. So it has to go down and then it will activate this relay, which then tells the logic circuit that the lift has to go down. And the same thing, if I were to activate a call above the lift, let's say on the top floor, then I would apply the current here and then the current cannot go through that gap. So it has to go up to this side and this informs the logic circuit that the lift has to go up to get the call. Uh, now I've done this already. There it is. There's my first logic circuit of how it all works. Uh, my first attempt, and to be honest, it's an absolute mess. And even I have trouble working out what I need to do to get this to work. Ugh. Yes, I know. You're having a laugh. Right, I think I need to make a Mr. Matt and Mr. J2 account. Now this means that I do lose my original circuits that I designed, but the thing is I want to start completely from scratch because I want to show you guys the way the circuit works. And the best way to do that is to start from scratch. The first thing I'm going to show you is just a few basics of how this works. So this takes you back to your school days. I'm going to have a battery, a switch and a light bulb. So if I put these in a ring, that makes a circuit. Mr. Perfectionist here, I like to have things neatly organized. Right, so they're the devices. So I've got a battery, I've got a light bulb, and I can adjust the voltage that this runs at. So it's 1.5 volts, 1.5 volt battery, that's fine. Let's link it all together. Now, one thing with this every circuit circuit designer is that will not work. And it seems to like to have a ground point attached. So I'm just going to attach that down the bottom here. Now, that's quite important. And I will tell you about that in a moment. Let's run it and see what happens. So put on the switch. Circuit is made and on comes the light bulb. Little component down here is just an earthing point. And I'm going to be using a different method to design this circuit. So I need to show you how this works. If I were to disconnect that, then you would think that that is no longer a circuit and you would be correct. But if I put a grounding point on there and I put a grounding point on the power supply, in this case the battery, then although that doesn't look like it's a circuit, all grounding points connect together. So that is essentially connected to that. If I were to now run the circuit, then there you go. The light bulb still comes on. So as I design the express lifts logic circuit using this circuit designer, I will be using this quite a lot. I'll be putting 
earth points and you have to remember that all the grounds connect together. Let's scrap this then and let's start off with some of the, oh, I've got 23 hours left to complete this. Let's see if I can do it. First thing we need to do are the bulbs that indicate where the lift is. These switches here represent the floor selector. Now these are the switches that were on the right on my diagram. So the ones that are here, the ones that are normally open and connect together when the lift is at the floor, that's the ones I'm doing here. So I'm going to do ground one, two, three, four, I think for the floors. Now what we need is a battery. Now in a real lift circuit, this will probably be 110 volts or maybe 50 volts for the lamps, but I'm using a one volt battery. Now I'm going to increase the voltage. The reason being is that when I use these relays, not yet, but a bit later on, the minimum voltage they can work at is 3.5 volts, which means I need to increase this battery to about 3.5. I'm going to do four volts. There's our four volt supply. Now these are lamps. These will represent where the lift is. And you would normally find these in a floor display panel, normally on the ground floor. So when you look up at the lift and you're outside, you can tell where the lift is. And there may be also these inside the lift. Because if you're inside the lift and it arrives at a floor, you kind of like want to know what floor it is. So that's what these bulbs are representing. So you might have this as ground floor, then this will be first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor. Shows you where the lift is. And maybe there will be an arrow on the end that says lift going up and there will be an arrow on the end with a bowl behind it saying lift going down. These are going to be connected to these switches. All right, let's link all these up. So that switch activates the fourth floor bulb. This one does the third floor. This one does the second floor. This one does the first floor and this one does the ground floor. Let's link all the bulbs together. So these are all sharing the same supply. Now this is a little bit pointless at the minute because there's no power injected. So we are going to connect the positive side of the battery to this side of the switch or switches all wired in parallel. And then remember I said about connecting the negatives, you can either connect them directly to the battery, but it lights an earth point. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to put the earth point down here and this will connect it back to the battery but we need to put one on here as well. So there is our circuit. It goes from the positive, it goes through one of the switches, lights up a lamp and out the other side. And then this grounding point will connect it to this grounding point. Let's give it a go. So if the lift is on the ground floor, activates this switch and I've just blown the bulb. What have I done? Oh yes, um, oh, it's a four volt battery and a 1.5 volt bulb. So already I have to go up and down all the floors and replace all the bulbs. So far so good. Now these bulbs are normally about 50 volts in a lift circuit or some can be 110 volts. Here we have four volt bulbs and these can be duplicated. Remember, for example, the ground floor lamp may be on the ground floor outside the lift and you will probably have one inside the lift. So in other words, these will be doubled up, but I'm just putting one bulb there just so that the drawing looks a little bit more understandable. 
So let's give this a go. The lift is on the ground floor, it lights up the ground floor bulb. And then the lift starts up the shaft, so the floor selector goes around, it deselects the ground floor, selects the first floor, on comes the lamp, and up it goes to the second floor. So only one of these switches will be on at once. And that works fine. Now this is really simple. If you look in the motor room, you probably won't see this. You will see the switches connected to the selector, but then this wire here will then go down the lift shaft to the bulb, and then it will find the grounding point and that will find its way all the way back up into the motor room again. So now what we need to do is we need to have the floor lanterns. Now this bulb represents a up indicator. I'm going to need to turn it around. And this bulb represents a down indicator. So these will be on every landing. So if the lift were to arrive at the third floor and there was a call active, then the indicator outside the lift will come on to say the lift is going up, lift is going down. Now the express lift lanterns also have a bell in them. So whenever one of these bulbs comes on, there will be a little ting as well when that shows you the lift has arrived and it grabs your attention as well. So that's what we're going to be doing now. We need bulb for down on the top floor. We need a bulb for up and down on the fourth floor. I have to start being a bit clever here with the design because you can't put these too close together. So you kind of like have to stagger them apart a little bit. So these are all our lanterns on the landings. These ones will be the down indicators and these ones will be the up indicators. On the ground floor, if the lift arrives, it can only be going up, so there's no down. And same for the top floor. If the lift arrives at the top floor, it's not gonna go up through the shaft, through the roof. It's gonna be going back down again. So there's only a down indicator there. Now we need to link these together. Then the down indicators we need to link together. Now this side of the bulbs is going to find a negative, but we are going to use a switch. Now this would be connected to a relay and this would determine if the lift is currently going up or going down, depending which lamp comes on. So if the lift is going up, then this side will come on. If the lift is down, it will turn this side on. Remember, all these bulbs are linked together. So it depends which lamp is lit here or which switch is on here, depending which floor lamp will light up. So this side is going down and this side is going up. And as before, we need to connect this to a ground point. Um, now, if I can get that sideways, it will be good. I can, there we go. Right, so these bulbs now need a positive connection. There's the ground, which is naught volts or negative, goes through the lamp and it needs to get to the positive. Now, it will only go to the positive if the floor is selected. So if I were to connect these bulbs together, and then connect them to here. Let's see what happens. That's what happens. I've now destroyed some more bulbs. Let's change all these to the correct voltage. Let's see if I can sort that bulb out. Yes, I can, there we go. Now, if the lift is on the third floor, then if the lift is arriving and the lift is going down, then this one, this lamp will come on. 
But if it's going up, then this lamp will come on. So that's what this switch does down the bottom here. It either turns on the down indicators or the up indicators, depending which way the lift's going. Now at the minute, when the lift goes past any floor, it will light up the corresponding lantern outside the lift. The, the bit that we haven't done yet is the stopping logic. I mean, you only really want these lanterns and the bell to activate on the landing if the lift is going to stop. So we need to add something into here and we're gonna add it into this part. So this is where we need to redesign this a little bit. We need to think about the relays which connect into this circuit, which tell the lift to stop if there is a call active. Now one pretty cool thing about this every circuit designer is you can grab a component and you can move it aside and it will still keep the wires connected. That is so useful. So let's start this again over this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the up and the down bulbs for every floor together. That's for the third floor. Up and down indicators for the second floor. Perfection. And then we've only got one bulb for the ground floor. Right, now we only want these lanterns to activate when there is a call active. So we are going to bring a couple of switches in here. We're going to bring in one down here. Now this represents a, an active call on the top floor. And now this has a corresponding switch which is linked together. These two switches are linked. Now this is one limitation with this every circuit designer. You can't have double pole switches. Now what a double pole switch is, if this switch were to activate, then it's linked mechanically to this one. So for example, if I were to activate this switch, it would automatically activate that one because they're linked together. Now that's how a lot, well, most relays work. You've normally got more than one switch inside them. Now it's the same thing for the relays. If I were to bring a relay down here and activate this electromagnet here, I want to be able to activate two switches. Now these switches can appear in different places in the circuit. They don't necessarily have to be drawn next to each other. So what I would like is, if I were to apply a voltage to this electromagnet here, it will activate the first switch and that will be mechanically linked to the second switch. So then I can place this switch over here and I can place this switch over here, but they will still operate together. Now you can't do that. so. The only way to represent this is to do two completely independent switches and then I have to remember to switch them both on together. It's not a big deal, but um, it would be nice to have double pole switches. So we're going to put a switch over this side and a switch over this side, which we will be coming back to later. But these are mechanically linked together. If I activate this one, I have to activate this one. This or these two switches are representing an active call on the top floor. Let's draw some more switches in. So this is going to be the same thing, but for the floor below. And there's the corresponding switch on this side. Yeah, it's better. This is for the second floor. Um, I don't really want it to link up. Yeah, there we go. Mustn't forget the corresponding switches on this side. And one left for the ground floor. Don't, yes, it can. It can connect there, that's fine. Then we have the corresponding switch for the ground floor on this side. Why do I see five floors and only four switches? That's because I forgot to do the bottom one. Right, so then. The lanterns only come on. Remember there's a little arrival bell in these as well. So when that bulb comes on, it goes bing. And that will then connect to the stopping circuit to stop the lift. 
I only want these to come on if there is an active call and the lift is at the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two bulbs through the switch and it's going to connect to the floor switch directly from the selector. Let's do the top floor. There's only one bulb there and there will be one bell there as well. The second floor will then connect through the second floor call active switch connected to the floor selector switch. Same for the first floor. And the ground floor only has one bulb. Here we go. Now let's see that work. All right, so the lift is on the third floor. I'm going to activate a call on the first floor. Now we haven't done the direction logic yet, which is what's going to happen on this side. But if there's an active call, I have to activate both switches because they are mechanically linked together. So the direction logic tells the lift to go down. We're going to cover that in a moment. But let's do it here. So D selects the third floor, selects the second floor, and it's going to continue down until it receives a stop signal. Now the stop signal will be connected to these lamps here. So if you see one of these bulbs come on, you can assume that it's also triggered the stopping circuits. Now there's no call active on the second floor because you can't get through this switch here. So the lift will continue down. And then when it gets to this floor, now the current goes through the selected floor from the floor selector. It lights up the first floor indicator and then the current can also flow through here through the switch and it lights up one of these corresponding bulbs the the lift bell goes bing and the lift stops and the direction of the lift is then indicated so this indicates the lift is going up but let's say it's going down so this switch here alters whether the up or the down indicator comes on now one thing you may notice here is this bulb here is lit with four volts. So it's lighting up the same as the one over here. But you see this one here is glowing slightly. Now this is a slight flaw in my circuit here, but I'm just trying to keep this simple so that it's understandable. This is getting its voltage through the bulbs up here because the circuit is finding its way back through other bulbs. So the current comes down here and it activates this bulb here. So how is this one coming on? Well, if you were to follow these slow moving dots, then the current is actually finding its way up here, back through that bulb, back through that bulb, down to this bulb. So it's finding another path, but you get the idea. It's, it's working, but it's not kind of, it's not perfect. Now to get that perfect, I could, put a diode in place. Now this one here is a diode. If I were to add that into the circuit, then I could, it's a bit like a gate, it only lets current go in one direction. I could then stop it from going back through other bulbs to get the voltage from there. So I could, if I wanted to, remove this wire from here to here and then add a diode in there. It's not gonna do it. But I'm not going to because I want to try and keep this diagram so that you, you guys can understand it and it doesn't get too complicated. And at the minute, it's not too complicated. Lift going up, lift going down. If there's no call active, then the lamps don't come on, the lift will keep going. And then these ones are from the floor selector, which select the floor the lift is at. Are you still with me? Now we move to the switches on this side. Now this is the direction logic. If I bring up my floor selector diagram up here, what we are now going to do is we are going to create a line from one relay all the way down through the selector switches, the normally closed switches, to another relay. And then we're going to break the line where the lift is. Then we're going to inject a voltage into it if there is an active call. You're thinking, what the hell does all that mean? But I'm going to show you. The switches we are now going to be using are these switches. 
the switches that are normally joined together and they break when the lift arrives at that floor. So for example, there is a break here. That's because that's where the lift is and there will be a little bar that comes out and it will, I think it just, um, it, it hits the side of the switch and moves them apart. Then when the lift moves to the next floor, then this one will deselect and then this one will then break that one. So in other words, only one of these switches is broken at the same time. Let's add those floor selector switches. Now I'm gonna add these so they are facing a vertical direction. Now the issue we got here is we need to add a relay at the top and the bottom of this line. And these ones get in the way a little bit. So we may have to jig this around a little bit in a moment. But for now, let's add a switch per floor. Okay, I think that works. Let's join the line up, not like that. Each switch needs to join together. So that will join to that switch. And top and bottom, we need a relay. The relay down here represents the lift has to go down. So this relay, this switch here, will be connected somehow to the motor. So if you see this relay come on, then you can assume the lift is going in the downward direction. If this relay were to come on, then this switch here will be connected to some contactors which make the lift go up. Let's try and get them level with each other, top and bottom. There we go. Now these switches represent an active call. So if there's an active call on the fourth floor, then this switch will be on. And don't forget, it's linked to that switch. They are mechanically linked. It's a double pole switch. Only thing is, is whenever I turn on one of these switches, I have to remember to turn on the corresponding switch on this side. Now we're going to link up all of these switches. And connect them to a separate supply. Now it would normally be linked over here, but I don't really want a line going all the way through my diagram to get to there or it would take it up around the top. It's going to be messy. So I'm just going to add another supply. So these relays run at, I think, minimum three volts. So I'm going to adjust this to four volts. Now this is going to inject a voltage into each of these switches like that. That voltage will be injected into this line when there is an active call on that floor. Second floor, first floor, it doesn't quite line up, but it's good enough and that's quite understandable. I wish I hadn't moved that line there because that looked quite nice when it was going into the corner, but never mind. So with a positive voltage going into this side, injected into the line, that positive voltage will either go up or down. And that's the whole point of this logic circuit is whether it goes up to the up motor relay, whether it goes down to the down motor relay. So the coil needs to be grounded to make the circuit going from positive to negative. I could do that. And in actual fact, that looks quite nice. There we go. So there is our circuit. But the thing that this circuit designer needs is it needs a ground reference anyhow. So I need to add one of these symbols connected to the negative side of the battery in this case. If I rotate it round, then that makes it even more understandable. There we go. Not quite what I wanted, but oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Mr. Perfectionist. Oh yes. Now that is good. 
Right, now let's switch this on and see what happens. Uh, right, I need to do a little bit of a tweak here. So let's put these switches in the right position. So let's say the lift is on the second floor. All the calls are inactive. Now, as the lift is on the second floor, this switch is open and all the rest are closed. Like that. So the lift is not being commanded to go up and the lift is not commanded to be down because there's no call active. So let's place a call on the top floor. So this is the fourth floor. Let's activate the button on that landing and that turns a relay on which latches and that turns both of these switches on so call active on the top floor and mechanically linked to this one that does exactly the same so we have now developed a circuit around here through the active call and then it has to decide to take the lift up or down now as i said before these lifts don't have brains they can't go well, it's pretty damn obvious because I'm on the second floor and the lifts and the call is active on the top floor. It's pretty obvious you've got to go up. This is where this selector comes in. It's opening up the circuit where the lift is, which is on the second floor, which stops the current from reaching the going down relay. So this is on its way up. The lift starts moving the floor selector rotates around. Now what activates the floor selector are these little veins in the lift, in, sorry, in the lift shaft. So as the lift starts moving, it goes past these little veins and that rotates the selector. So there'll be a vein in between these floors, which will then deselect this floor. Electromagnet activates, turns the selector. There'll be another vein as it gets very close to the next floor above which then turns it around one more time and it activates the fourth floor. Note, there are no calls active on this floor, so it will continue upwards. Now, one thing I should be doing is when I'm activating these switches, I should be deactivating these switches. Now, the way the selector works is it doesn't allow the line to be made completely. What it does is it selects it deselects the floor above and then it joins up the floor below. That's the way it works. So it's still going up, notice. Goes up through the next floor, deselects the um, third floor and selects the fourth floor. Ding, there is a call active. The lantern comes on on the landing and the bell activates and it starts the stopping circuit. So let's continue this side note the top floor has now stopped the up motor and the doors open then the floor is then cancelled now it's waiting for the person to get in and select the floor inside the lift which will then activate one of these switches let's do it so the person's got in and he wants to go to the first floor so that will activate a call or activate this relay so that switch activates which also is linked to this one and you'll notice now that the down relay is on so now the current is going through the first floor the lift is commanded to go down because it can't go up this way because this switch is open because that's where the lift is now the lift will start going down so we deselect the fourth select the third and then we have to Activate this one and join up this one. Continues down until the stop sequence is initiated. Whoops, didn't want to do that, sorry. Deselect the next floor and then join up that floor. On the second floor, no call active, so it continues down. Selects this one and bing, it's found a call, so it stops the lift going down. Must complete this side. There we go. And yes, I've got this switch in the right position. <laughs> the lift is actually going down. So you could say that this switch here is linked to which way the um, motor is turning. So if it's going up, it activates these bulbs. If it's going down, it activates these bulbs. Now, the question is, 
if there is a call active below the lift, then there could be multiple switches activate. Now, I don't know what's going on with this circuit. This has happened before, but for some reason, it doesn't like my um, uh, activating more than one switch on this side. I don't know why, but it seems to blow up my circuit. So what I have to do now is I have to remove that switch and then replace it. So I have effectively just virtually blown up my lift circuit. But it's easily joined back together again. Let's see if it runs this time. Okay, back to where we were before. Now, the question is, what happens if the lift is going down and then a call comes in above the lift? So let's activate it here. And what you might have here is now we have both the up and the down relays activated. And that doesn't make sense because the lift can't go up and down at the same time. So we have a problem. Now the solution is quite simple. If the lift is going down, then what we could do is we could wire this switch to break the current going to this switch or relay. So what we could do is we could connect the switch on the downward direction relay to disconnect the switch, to disconnect the relay coil on the upward relay. So in other words, if it's going down, it can't go up and vice versa. If the lift is going up, we wire this switch to disconnect this relay. Now I can wire that in, but things are gonna get, start to get very complicated here. But if you've understood the principle, then that's how it works. But we're gonna do that anyway. So this goes to, I didn't need to do that. Let's just undo that. So we want to make this relay not come on if this relay is on. Now I have to break it. So this will go through this switch before it gets to the naught volts. And I have to connect that back in as well. So that will work. And then this relay can only trigger if this relay is off. So it goes through the normally closed and then back to the supply. Let's see what it does with that. There we go. So that should work. Let's run that now. All right, let's cancel all the calls. Lift is on the first floor. The line is broken there. Right, so now I'm gonna activate a call above the lift. So I'm gonna do the third floor. So that switch activates and this one activates. That sends the lift in the upwards direction. So the lift starts up the shaft. It disconnects this one. It breaks the line there. It selects the floor above. It joins the line there. Now as it's going up, I'm gonna activate a call on the ground floor. Oh, actually there's already one there. So I activate that one and activate this switch. But you see, it can't go the other direction because it's already going up. This relay here has actually disconnected this relay here. So it can only go up. And when this relay turns off, like it's arrived at the floor, then it reconnects this one. So then it can go down. Let's try it out. So the lift stops, the lantern comes on, the bell activates. Let's um, follow up with this one. There we go. Oh, and it's blown up my circuit again. But you saw momentarily there the the direction change. Let's just um, repair my switch. Anyway, you saw momentarily when it arrived at this floor. Let's see if I can finally get it to do this. When it arrived at this floor, because there was a call active below, it then immediately switched on the downward motor. Now you've got to appreciate that this is a very simple basic design here just to show you the principle of how this all works. There will be a lot more relays connected into this circuit so that when the lift is arriving, it allows the doors to open and someone to get in before it starts going back down again. So this is just like a quick representation of how the logic circuit works. And I think I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, that's how 
the express lifts floor logic works based on that diagram there. Just to finish things off a little bit, I've saved it and I may make this public so you guys can have a mess around with it. But I'm going to have a bulb which indicates whether this relay is on or this relay is on. So I'm just going to link these up. So if there is a positive on this end of the line, this lamp comes on. And if there is a positive on this end of the line, then this lamp comes on, both connected to the ground there. Let's see if that works. So if I activate a call below the lift. Yes. Oh, <laughs> need to delve into that spares cabinet for some more bulbs. I've blown it. I've not adjusted the default voltage of the bulb. And there we go. If there is a call above the lift, let's just get rid of that one. And if I activate the call on the top floor, which was already on there, and it should be on on this side as well, the lift goes up, that disconnects the relay on the bottom, and it lights up the up bulb. The job is done. I hope you enjoyed my explanation about how the express lifts relay logic works in a very, very simple form that hopefully you've all understood.